Okay, looks like we are indeed recording. Uh, my microphone is working. So, let me make a few observations about Peter Singer's Stinger, Peter Singer's essay, Famine, Affluence, and Morality. Now, <clears throat> the first step towards really engaging with and understanding a complex and subtle and nuanced work like is, is typical in philosophy, is to try to figure out what the writer is trying to do and how they're doing it. So, in this case, Peter Singer is responding to a contemporary famine crisis, but he's using that as a pretext to make a broader argu argument about how we should ethically respond to such crises. To, his, to the good, he sets out his premises very explicitly and draws conclusions, and then he responds to anticipated criticisms. However, does this argument hold up to analysis? Let me make a few observations. I'm not saying what it does or what it doesn't, but I think these are things that are worth considering. So it's interesting that for someone who is a putative consequentialist, Singer does rather strongly emphasize the importance of not doing anything that is wrong in itself. But if wrong in itself is a thing, to that extent, is he truly a consequentialist? Or is this, is he kind of backdooring Kantian deontological or duty ethics into his utilitarian argument. Singer seems to just assume that we all have an obligation to help other people if we have the means to do so. But you know what? Although that isn't necessarily wrong, it goes against um, a lot of tacit presuppositions that we have in the US. In France, for example, if you observe someone who needs help and you have the means to help them, you have an obligation to do so. For example, if you're a trained lifeguard, but off duty and you see someone in danger of drowning, you have a duty to intervene. But in our own American system of justice, the presupposition goes the opposite way. You don't have an obligation to interview, intervene. If you intervene, and indeed, if something goes amiss, you can be held liable. Thus, for example, if Michael Phelps saw you struggling in your pool, it would be safer for him just to walk along than to try to dive in and save you. Singer also seems to assume a rather cosmopolitan viewpoint. The word cosmopolitan literally translates as a citizen of the world. The philosopher Diogenes was the first person to give, him, give himself that title. On the one hand, do most people truly feel that way? I, I, I'm sorry, but I live in Southern California. I'm day in, day out, I'm a bit more concerned about what natural disasters, and they're all too common, occur to myself or other people here in Orange County or San Diego County or Los Angeles County than I am about Arkansas or um, Alabama. How am I wrong for that? That said, if we accept Singer's premise, wouldn't it make sense then that more of us would be like, well, let me go to the share function and share an image uh, with you while I'm talking about this person. Let's see, share screen and... Ah, my bad, here we go. Greta Thunberg. Now, here's the thing about Greta Thunberg. Um, I think she's admirable. But how many people are as passionate and concerned about 
the challenge of global warming as she is. She's in Sweden. Does she really, you know, how many people here in the United States worry about what happens to people in Sweden? How many Swedish people worry about what happens in, um, in the United States? I think the fact that she does so is admirable. But you know what is that really typical of most human beings? Singer makes a distinction between duty and charity and argues that as human beings, it makes more sense to understand being concerned for people in other countries suffering disaster as the former more than the latter. But what of the notion that the world does not owe you a living? That's a commonplace here in the United States. Are we not each of us on our own or not? Also, Singer quotes Thomas Aquinas to the effect that no man should have more than enough while others have less than they need. But doesn't this fall afoul of the naturalistic fallacy? He's going from a statement of fact some people have more than enough to a prescriptive statement. Such access should be employed to help those who have less than they need. He's going from, in one sentence, he is bridging a is statement of fact to a ought statement. Singer also states that the best means of preventing famine in the long run is population control. Well, is he correct in this? Back in the 1970s, there was a popular, rather alarmist book called uh, The Population Bomb. People got way upset over the concerns about overpopulation, but lo and behold, it turns out that uh, <clears throat> the author of that book expected that we would have widespread starvation and famine within 10 years and it didn't occur. Why? Because agrarian science moved faster. We can now make more food on less land than was the case when that book was written. So, is he correct in this? Or does this statement perhaps smack a tad of eugenics? After all, even if we take what he says as true on his face, that raises the question, who gets to determine which population should be controlled and how they should be controlled? Where do we draw the line? Don't get me wrong, I'm just pointing out some of the uh, issues that occur to me with when I read Singer's essay. I think he, he has a very noble sentiment here. I think he makes a well-structured argument, but I'm not sure if it entirely holds up to analysis. But that said, and I know I'm very st strange in this regard. Let me say something that most professors never ever say, and I think it, they should. I might be wrong. What do you think? Does, state, does Singer make a valid argument here? Or can we find a number of ways to rebut it? Or is it perhaps a bit of both? Let me know your thoughts. I will be making some comments on the first a uh, couple of readings in the textbook for this week. But, oh, it's almost eight o'clock at night here in California. So I think I'm gonna give a break for a night and I'll get to that tomorrow. Ciao for now.